Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to focus on a case study for an earthquake and it's going to be for an MEDC, so a developed country, and we're going to look at Japan. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at for the case study for Japan earthquake is the date and the time. So it happened on the 11th of March. So 11th of March 2011. And the time was 14.46. So it happened at quarter to three uh, Japanese time. So the location um, of Japan, it's on three te tectonic plates. So you've got the Eurasian plate. You have the Pacific plate. And you have the Philippine plate. So Japan actually has three plates uh, surrounding them. Three, so there are, we saw it on the the boundary is on three uh, plate boundaries. Okay, so it's um the type of plate boundary is the destructive plate boundary. So the intensity of the earthquake, um, it reached nine on the Richter scale, so nine on the Richter scale. And it actually reached um seven point two on the Richter scale. Um, before the actual main uh, earthquake on the 11th of March. So it was 7.2 on the 9th of March. And it also suffered lots of aftershocks, with some of the aftershocks uh, being as big as 6 on the Richter scale. Okay, so that just gives you uh, kind of like the, the magnitude and the intensity of this earthquake, it was 9 on the Richter scale uh, on the 11th of March, the actual earthquake. It was 7.2 on the 9th of March and it was actually uh, reached 6 on the Richter scale um, a few days after the earthquake with all the aftershocks. So just to go back with the, the location, um, so what actually happened was you had the uh, Pacific plate, the, which is an oceanic plate, was being subducted uh, underneath the Eurasian plate. And what happened was, was lots of uh, build up a, a strain of energy, and eventually the the, the friction uh, wasn't able to withstand anymore. And what happened was, uh, this the the plate bounced up, and the friction uh, was released in an earthquake and seismic waves. The focus uh, was the shallow focus. So a shallow focus, as we know, will lead to more destructive um, and more devastation. And it was thirty two kilometers beneath the epicenter so it was a really really shallow focus the epicenter was only 70 kilometers uh, from the coast from the coastline so this led to um, obviously it being a very very shallow focus with 32 kilometers um, with the focus only being 32 kilometers um, in, this, in, the, in the crust and then the epicenter was only 70 kilometers from the coastline so this led to uh, one of the reasons why it was so uh, destructive. With the plates, you had the Pacific plate. So the Pacific plate was subducting um, beneath the Eurasian plate. Subducting beneath Eurasian plate. So the Pacific plate was the oceanic, and the Eurasian plate was the continental. The, the Pacific plate was the, the why it, it why it, why the oceanic plate subducts is because it's uh, it's heavier, it's uh, it's more dense than the Eurasian plate, even though it's it's thinner because uh, it's it's oceanic, but because it's made up of mainly like a basalt rock, so it's much heavier, and it, therefore therefore it's the reason why it uh, subducts beneath the Eurasian plate. One thing to know about um the location of uh, Japan, it lies in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Um, and 30% of the world's earthquakes uh, occur uh, very close to Japan. So it's a very, very common area for earthquakes. But earthquakes of this size with a, with a magnitude of 9 on the Richter scale is very uh, rare. Okay, so this was rare, even though they suffer uh, around 30% of the world's earthquakes, for an earthquake to be of this size was very, was very rare. Okay, so the area affected was over 500 and 60 square kilometers 
square kilometers uh, that that was affected because of uh, the earthquake. Because of the, the the earthquake, it led to many hazards, um, such as landslides. It led to tsunami. It led to a nuclear disaster. And lots of flooding. So these are some of the hazards that was uh, created because of the, the the earthquake in Japan 2011. So with the deaths uh, total, there was over 15,000 people killed. 15,000 people killed. And to this day, there's still over uh, 2,500 people m missing. 2,500 people missing in damages there was an estimate that between 120 to 230 billion worth of damage was was, was caused um which is about 2 to 4% of Japan's total GDP there was over 3000 people uh Injured from the, the needed the needed in the needed uh, some medical care. So if, with the infrastructure, there was over two hundred thousand uh, buildings destroyed. Destroyed. Um, over six million homes were left without electricity. Electricity. Over one million people had no running water, had no water. 500 uh, square kilometers square kilometers of land uh, was was destroyed was destroyed uh, Fukushima's nuclear power station uh, power plant was destroyed. Which released lots of radiation into the Fukushima area and caused many uh, future problems for the Japanese people. Nearly 700,000 buildings were partially destroyed. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the reasons for the high levels of destruction that was uh, that resulted from this earthquake in Japan. So one of the reasons was because of the location, because of the really shallow focus, and then because the epicenter was very uh, close to the coast. The next one was because um, of the time of the earthquake, because the earthquake happened during the day. Uh, lots of schools and businesses businesses were um, were were taking place at that time. And thousands of people then uh, became trapped uh, beneath the buildings and uh, couldn't escape to high ground when the tsunami uh, hit the coastline. The next reason is because of the magnitude. Because the earthquake was 9 on the Richter scale, it was one, the fifth biggest ever recorded uh, earthquake, it meant that the buildings, even though they were constructed very well, they weren't able to withstand the sheer uh, size of, of the seismic waves um, and this resulted in many buildings collapsing and led to more uh, destruction and deaths and injuries. Another one of the reasons uh, for the high levels of destruction in, in this earthquake was because of the, the various hazards that was created because of the earthquake. 
So after the earthquake uh, happened, it, it created a tsunami. Um, because of the, the tsunami then, you know, they, the coastline um, with, with high waves up to 30 metres high. This caused many people to be killed, uh, drowned. It, 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 it damaged a lot of buildings. Um, the wave travelled at like 500 kilometres per hour um, out at sea. And like I said, the wave uh, height went to 30 metres in some places. So because of the earthquake uh, creating the tsunami, it, 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 cre it created even more um, hazards for people, which, which killed many, trapped thousands, and prevented lots of relief workers from reaching the affected areas. There was lots of uh, landslides and mudslides because of the... Um, because of the the the, the water that, that, that inundated the land... And this then created uh, lots and lots of further destruction um, for the people of Japan. It also um, created like a, match, uh, a nuclear explosion um, in Fukushima when the nuclear uh, power plant exploded because of the tsunami breached the 10 metre uh, high walls. And this created further destruction and released lots of radiation um, for the people of Japan then. Um, which which caused them many problems and still to this day cause causes uh, the people of the Fukushima area many problems. So we're going to look at now the capacity um, to cope that Japan has. So what capacity does it have to cope and what kind of measures does it put in place um, to try to reduce the impact of destruction. Now, in Japan usually they suffer many earthquakes um, this earthquake was considerably uh, destructive and for some of the reasons above. And we're going to just look at their capacity to actually cope with earthquakes. Um, what they do actually, they, they um, do earthquake drills every, uh, every year in Japan on the 1st of, the, of September. Um, and this helps their capacity to cope with earthquakes because um, all the children, adults... Um, and everybody in emergency services know what to do in the case of an earthquake. So they do practice earthquake drills quite frequently in Japan. And on the 1st of September, it's National Earthquake Day, and they do practice earthquake drills uh, on that day too. 40% uh, of Japan's uh, coastline has seawalls 10 metres high. That's 10 metres high seawalls and this is obviously a great uh, prevention for when like tsunami waves uh, come for example um, now again going back to the pre to the our case study in 2011 it did breach the 10 meter high um, seawalls in many parts of the of the coast but that was because of the, sh the sheer size of the tsunami that was created because of the sheer size of the magnitude of the earthquake which was 9 on the Richter scale They use lots and lots of technology um, to monitor earthquakes. Um, they've got over 200 seismographs and they use these to, to measure any seismic waves activity and then to use this information to maybe alert the people of, of Japan. They've got lots and lots of different ways to alert um, the people of Japan such as like text messages they put uh, messages on the radio, on a TV. They've also got alarms that go off if there's in danger of a tsunami uh, taking place. They've also have very well trained uh, emergency staff. So the staff are are very well trained um, to deal with earthquakes and to deal with uh, tsunamis um, when they do occur because they, they know they are going to, they can't stop earthquakes or tsunamis from taking place they know they are going to take they are going to happen but what they do try to do is try to be able to protect the people and to try um, to try to, to deal with the event when it does take place so they do have teams re readily trained uh, and people to assist when events like this uh, does actually happen. So their capacity to cope with earthquakes are actually on tsunamis and other natural uh, hazards is very good. But with this case study that we're looking at, this wasn't enough. There was still huge destruction 
and is for these is mainly because of the reasons that we said above. We're going to look at their response to when they did suffer this huge earthquake, which led to a tsunami and then a, nu a nuclear uh, power plant in uh, Fukushima exploding. What did they actually? How did they respond? Okay, so we're going to look at their response to uh, the earthquake in Japan, and they actually gave a really good warning. Um, so up to some people had up to twenty minutes of a warning before the tsunami actually uh, hit the area. So the Japan Meteorology Agency, the JMA, they gave people up to twenty minutes of a warning, which provided which saved many uh, thousands of people from 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 dying as they were able to then to to get to high to higher ground, and to get out of the to get to move out of the coastal areas. So this was a they, like this showed like a great response to a natural hazard, a natural disaster that they were that they were suffering. If it was in a poor country, then. The, and they probably wouldn't have had the te technology, they wouldn't have the response, and therefore it would have led to even more people being killed um, that, than that was killed in Japan. There was over 340,000 uh, people displaced, and these people that were displaced um, were all catered for, for with shelter, with food, um, with water, with medicine, or and any fuel for all the survivors, and because they were so well trained and the emergency services were so well drilled, they knew exactly how to be able to deal with all the people and the sheer volume of people that were actually displaced. They received up to one billion in donations, um, from the Japanese Red Cross, um, from the Japanese, uh, Red Cross, which shows their ability to be able to respond um, and to help um, in the in a natural in, in, in this natural disaster of, of an earthquake within six days so six days they had uh, the motorways cleared so all the motorways in Japan were cleared and again this shows like the sheer uh, response and, and their capacity to cope quite rapidly when a natural uh, disaster of this magnitude actually hits them. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for, for this case study. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, can you please leave me some feedback? Uh, maybe just you could tweet us uh, on our Twitter account or leave a message on our Facebook account or maybe get us on our Instagram page. And if you'd like any more videos, please check out our website, examrevision.ie. You can see it just uh, so examrevision.ie. Uh, Thanks, guys.